When conducting a patrol in a given AO for an extended period of time, it may be necessary to establish what's called a patrol base in order to give your guys the much needed time to rest, recover, and prepare for follow on missions. In this episode of Infantryman's Guide, we're going to be going over basic considerations for establishing and operating out of a patrol base. Thanks for watching. The purpose of a patrol base is to provide a secure position where the patrol holds for extended periods of time in order to conduct follow on patrols in support of the mission. Establishing a patrol base is necessary when there's a need to cease all movement during daylight hours to avoid detection, hide the patrol while the patrol leader conducts a detailed reconnaissance of an objective area, rest and reorganize after extended movements, formulate a new plan to issue necessary orders before actions in the objective, reorganize after a patrol has infiltrated the enemy area in a small group, conduct several and consecutive or concurrent operations such as ambush, raid, or reconnaissance patrols. Additionally, there are unforeseen situations that may occur during the conduct of a patrol that can lead to an on-the-spot establishment of a patrol base. An example of an unforeseen situation would be that a large enemy force has moved in between the patrol and friendly lines. The initial patrol base is usually selected by using a map, or by conducting aerial reconnaissance, or by using prior knowledge of an area during a patrol planning process. After selection, the actual occupation of the initial patrol base remains tentative until its suitability is confirmed and it has been secured. Plans to establish a patrol base must include selection of an alternate location, a rendezvous point, and a rallying point. The patrol will use the alternate patrol base location if the initial location proves to be unsuitable or if the patrol is required to evacuate the initial location prematurely. The patrol leader should plan for at least one, preferably two, alternate patrol base locations if the area is unknown or if the patrol will be establishing patrol base at night. At night, the patrol base may appear to provide cover and concealment, but when it becomes daylight, the location may actually be fully exposed to possible enemy observation and fire. The patrol selects and uses rendezvous points when it has to vacate the patrol base by individual or small group movements to avoid enemy detection. The patrol members should know the rendezvous points, but is not normally reconnoitered before use. The rallying point is used if the patrol is dispersed from the patrol base. It is a point that the patrol has previously passed and found suitable and is known to all. A patrol base may be occupied in one of two ways. The first method is to take it by force. That is to move into the selected site, expand into it, and organize the area. The second method, which is most preferred, but is dependent on whether time permits, is to conduct a thorough leader's recon of the tentative patrol base location before the rest of the patrol occupies it. To utilize this method, you'll hold the patrol at the last suitable position, which is generally one major terrain feature away, or two to 400 meters in good visibility, or one to 200 meters in poor visibility. After close in security is established, the leader's recon is organized to conduct reconnaissance of the tentative patrol base. This usually includes element leaders such as squad leaders or fire team leaders, depending on the size of the patrol. A compass man, radio operator, and one man for security from each element will also accompany the leader's recon. The assistant patrol leader will remain behind with the rest of the patrol. When conducting reconnaissance of the patrol base, your patrol leader moves with the element leaders and the security team to the tentative patrol base location. While en route to the tentative patrol base location, he will dogleg, which is taking a 90 degree turn. At that turn, he will leave a listening and observation post if manpower allows. The leader's recon will then proceed to the tentative patrol base location. At that location, the patrol leader will designate one point of entry into the patrol base. This point is designated as a six o'clock. Only one point is designated as the entrance and exit to reduce the chances of being discovered. The party then moves to the center of the proposed patrol base. This location will be designated as the patrol base's headquarters position. Once in the center, the patrol leader will then assign sectors of responsibility using the clock system to the respective element leaders. The element leaders will then inspect their assigned areas for suitability and report to the patrol leader upon completion. Concurrently, we will try to establish calm with hire. If we do not have good radio communications, then the patrol base location is not suitable. Set up security for the patrol base by sending the security team to the various element link-up points. These individuals will remain at these positions until the rest of the patrol members have been sent in. Once the patrol base has been deemed suitable, the signal will be given to the rest of the patrol to enter the patrol base, or the patrol leader will return and lead the patrol into the center of the patrol base. The 
The rest of the patrol will move into the center of the patrol base where the element leaders are located in a single file line. Designate a patrol member at the rear of the patrol to remove all signs of the patrol's movement as they enter the patrol base to avoid enemy detection. Once at the center, each element leader will grab his guys and move his element to the left flank of their assigned sector. Each element will then occupy their position of the perimeter by moving clockwise from the left flank of their element to its right. Once the patrol members are in their respective position, the element leaders will conduct a reconnaissance of their sectors of responsibility. Move a designated distance forward of their left flank and sweep clockwise until they reach the right flank of their element. Inspect for signs of recent enemy activity in the area. Looking for potential observation and listening post positions. Withdrawal routes and potential danger areas. Your patrol base's shape can be whatever you need to meet your specific tactical situation. But there are a few basic designs that tend to work best in providing all around security and facilitate good communication and ease of movement. And that is the triangle, 360, or cigar shape. In a triangle, each team or squad, depending on the size of your element, will take up one side of the respective triangle, with the command element in the center. In a 360 or cigar shape, each team or squad will be assigned a portion of the base using the clock system to cover. In the patrol base, machine guns have priority of emplacement. Machine guns should be used to cover likely avenues of enemy approach. Next, place light machine guns and automatic riflemen in the same manner after all medium machine guns have been placed. Next, place grenade launchers and or riflemen with grenades in positions that are needed to cover defilade. Lastly, fill in the gaps with your riflemen. Considerations for designated marksmen should also be made if they're present in your patrol. Next, let's talk about security measures for our patrol base. You should never establish a patrol base for more than 24 hours. Occupy a patrol base for a minimum time necessary to accomplish the mission. Do not use the same patrol base again at a later date. The location of the patrol base must be optimized for both passive and active security measures to best enable the patrol to accomplish its mission. Here are some passive security measures that should be considered when selecting and occupying a patrol base. Avoid built up areas. Select an area remote from all human habitation. Avoid known or suspected enemy positions. Select terrain normally considered of little tactical value. Avoid ridgelines, topographic crests, valleys, lakes, and streams. Select steep terrain, ravines, or other such areas that impede foot movement. Avoid all roads and trails. Select areas that do not offer natural lines of drift. Avoid sparsely wooded areas and clearings. Select areas that offer dense vegetation, preferably bushes and trees that are spread out close to the ground. If fighting against a near peer threat, select sites that provide heavy, vegetated, surrounding and overhead cover to help reduce the threat of thermal optics, both on the ground and in the air. As well as against the overwhelming abundance of UAVs on the modern day battlefield. Here are some active security measures that should be considered when selecting, occupying, and operating out of a patrol base. Establish observation and listening posts on all likely avenues of enemy approach in the area. Establish a radio communications network with your respective LPOPs to provide early warning of enemy approach. Select an alternate area for occupation if the original area is compromised or found unsuitable. Plan for the withdrawal in the event of discovery. Plan a route to the alternate patrol base. Establish an alert plan with certain percentages of personnel awake at all times. Organize the elements of the patrol so necessary activities can take place with minimum movement. Employ proper communication procedures to prevent compromise. Use only one point of entry and exit that is well camouflaged and guarded at all times. Noise and light discipline must be practiced at all times. To help reduce the noise made by patrol members moving inside the patrol base, clear pathways in the vegetation to each position so that the leaves and the twigs are not snapping and crunching with every step. These are called rat lines. 
accomplish noisy tasks such as cutting branches only at designated times or when the sound of an aircraft, artillery, or distant battlefield noises will cover them. Perform tasks as early as possible after occupation, but never at night or during the quiet periods of the early morning or late evening. Restrict movement to a minimum both inside and outside the patrol base. Occupy LPOPs when sufficient personnel are available so that they can alternate and remain alert without back and forth movement between the posts and the patrol base. At a minimum, observe a 100% alert status during dawn and dusk, which are generally the most advantageous times for an enemy attack. This consists of a stand-to period 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after first light in the morning as well as 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after dark in the evening. Each squad or team, if manpower permits, will put out one two-man LPOP during the day and one three-man during the night. Make sure each patrol member knows the location of members and their positions to the flanks, front, and rear, as well as the times and routes of any expected movements within, into, or out of the patrol base. Do not construct elaborate fighting positions inside a patrol base. Stress that camouflage and concealment are the top priority. Place early warning devices on avenues of approach. If the base is to be defended, place mines, trip flares, and booby traps in the areas that cannot be covered by fire. The value of these devices must be weighed against the fact that their discovery automatically compromises the patrol base. Artillery and mortar fires may be planned if available in support of the defense of your patrol base. Now we will discuss normal operations within the patrol base. First we will talk about communication. Establish communication with higher headquarters, elements, LPOPs, and a system must provide every man to be alerted quickly and quietly. Consider the following for options. Radios are an excellent means of alerting everyone, but they can easily compromise your location. If feasible, use wires such as field phones in the patrol base. Bravo 1, sit rep, over. You can also make use of tug or pull wires for signaling. They are quiet and reduce radio and telephone traffic. You can also use messengers within the patrol base. After security measures have been established within your patrol base, weapons and gear maintenance take priority. You and your team leaders will identify how many and of which weapon systems will be cleaned at one time. All automatic and crew serve weapons that are not being cleaned should be manned. Sanitation and personal hygiene are important tasks on long patrols. Improper personal hygiene can lead to disease or injuries that can hinder the patrol's performance. Wash, shave, and brush your teeth as needed, but conserve water use. Always use cat holes or carry your waste in plastic bags, i.e. wag bags. If cat holes are used, make sure they are covered and camouflaged appropriately. Carry all your trash out of the site. Never bury your trash in a patrol base. If the patrol leaves, animals will be able to smell the trash and dig it up, leaving it for the enemy to find. Eat at staggered times. There should always be someone on watch, and there should never be any time where everyone in the patrol is stuffing their face with chow. The use of water should be consistent with the demand and availability of water. If there is a local water source, planned water teams should provide the water. Individuals do not visit the water source. Make no more than two visits to the source in a 24-hour period. A proper rest cycle is essential for any fighting force. Rest and sleep are permitted when the patrol finishes its work. Rest periods are staggered so proper security is maintained. Schedule each individual for as much sleep and rest as possible. Packs should be concealed out of sight inside the patrol base. If the packs need to be left at the patrol base in order to carry out a mission, they should be camouflaged as much as possible before stepping. Patrol members must be cognizant of their light use. Using white light at night gives off a large glare and can be seen from great distances. To reduce the glare given off by white light, use a red lens capable flashlight. However, 
Even these can be seen from afar without proper use. If a light absolutely must be used at night, the patrol member should drape a poncho over his head, covering its use from the outside. IR light should be treated no differently. Both regular light and IR light will stand out significantly while looking through MVGs. Next, let's discuss resupply. If conducting a resupply in the patrol base, you should move the patrol to an alternate or different patrol base in order to lessen the chance of compromise. If this is not feasible, however, at the very minimum, do your resupply away from your patrol base and have your men bring the supplies back to the patrol base. Next, let's talk about planning inside a patrol base. You can make details of planned operations known to all patrol members, but do not assemble all at one time. Doing so will endanger the security of the base. Limit rehearsals to terrain models with a portion of the patrol rehearsing while the remainder provides security. If part of the patrol leaves for an operation, adjust the perimeter to maintain security. Keep orders as brief as possible and use SOPs as much as possible. Patrol bases are used in support of missions. Thus, elements that leave the patrol base will need an effective means in re-entering it. Everyone in the patrol base should know this process. You're fooling yourself if you think radio comms will always be up. Thus, elements should have a fully known and rehearsed re-entry of friendly lines plan that includes not only radios, but near and far recognition signals, as well as challenge and passwords. Boys going to Dallas this weekend? Yeah, we went to watch the Cowboys. Come on in. Lastly, let's consider the following points when departing a patrol base. Remove and conceal all possible signs of the patrol base's presence. Avoid night evacuation if possible. If you depart at night, you risk the chance of not seeing the signs, trash, or footprints that should have been concealed. The preferred method to evacuate a patrol base is to depart as a unit. Avoid departing the patrol base in teams or elements. Well, that's it, gentlemen. That completes this episode of Infantryman's Guide over basic considerations for selecting and operating out of a patrol base. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. I've already done several infantry-related videos. I plan to do several more in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment.